video game show it's a video game show it's not a game show about videos it's a video game show Welcome to the GamerCast Network Video Game Show. I'm MC Fragslot, and this is episode number 19 for January 5th, 2007. Happy New Year, everybody on Skype. Uh, Happy New Year, Happy MC New Fragslot. Year. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was, that yeah. Was, yeah, Skype. We're at Skype. I yeah. got it. So let me introduce the crew. All right, this week, when I say your name, you say, say what your favorite PC game was in the, over the last six years, but you cannot say Diablo 2. Ivan. I haven't played anything except Diablo 2 in the last six years. All right, how about Raven Shield? Keith. Neverwinter Nights. Chad. Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Phil. Uh, Battlefield 1942. Bob. Neverwinter Nights. Yeah. My favorite game in the last six years has been Day of Defeat. Time for GamerCast Network Community News. <laughs> it just seemed anticlimactic. Ivan, what happened to your TV? It died. 13 days, and it died. No! Yes. Wow. Did, did it just die, die, or not even on die, or just dead? It's no picture. Ah. Does it even, like, flash little lights at you? So you no. Can, no. It, that's dead. Yeah. So you call the retailer. This happened on Sunday. They said, earliest we can send somebody out is Thursday. And I said, I just bought this TV, and I'm not waiting five days for someone to come out and tell me that it's broke. So what else can I do? Well, you can take it back to the store. I'm like, oh, thanks. Huge ass box. The TV only weighs like 45 pounds. It's pretty light. But the box is enormous. And it's by Wednesday, I got fed up and decided that the most some guy is going to do when he comes out and say, yeah, it's broke. You need a new TV. Borrowed one of my friends from work and took it back. So that's it. That's my wonderful TV story. If you guys haven't already, please consider going to dig.com slash podcasts and digging the GamerCast Network. You can find a shortcut to our dig page on our own homepage at GamerCastNetwork.com. And while you're there, please also consider digging Gamertag Radio and Uncle Gamer Radio. Next topic. Oh, you know how the kids love the Halo? <laughs> Those kids, they love the Halo. The Halo 3 beta is coming out soon, so everyone can test it. And they had the first round of signups in December. And so those are already done. But... Bungie announced there are going to be two other ways to sign up for the Halo 3 beta. It's like Charlie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with this thing. <laughs> the golden tickets. Yeah, exactly. And, you know what? and you're very close on this is going to work. So the first way to do it is on between February 1st and February 3rd, if you play three hours of Halo 2 multiplayer over Xbox Live, and then go to Halo3.com and register, and if you're one of the first 1,333 people to do that... You'll be in the Halo 3 beta. <laughs> 1,333. Why did they pick that number? Well, here's the funny it's thing. Halo 3. Well, I understand that. They're doing that. the whole 3 thing. Why do they bother giving you three or two days to accomplish this from February 1st to midnight, February 3rd? Because you know February 1st at like midnight till 3 a.m., people are just going to play for three hours straight, then oh, go yes, right to the website. Yeah. It's going to be a mad dash. Exactly. So, kids, if you want to be in the Halo, you better stay prepare to stay up that night the second way to get in in the halo beta is if you go and buy a copy of crackdown for the xbox 360 which is coming out on february 20th that is going to come with a code or that's going to act as a key to unlock the halo beta for you over live uh, and the, the other uh, prerequisite for this is your xbox has to have a hard drive and you have to have a gold account and you have to right and you have to have an xbox live gold account you have to pay for all the things before you can enter next topic well, hey, all of the 2006 sales numbers are finally in, and we know what the top 10 selling games on all the platforms are, so I think this one's, this question's really easy. So, what is the top selling game of 2006? I won't say, because I know, but... It's I'll, easy. I'll it's say probably Gears of, Gears of War. Gears of War. No. No, come on. Think about nope. it. Oh, Madden's. I'm sorry. And, and number one spot is Madden for PlayStation 2. It was the number one selling game of 2006. Gears of War is on there for the Xbox 360 at number four. So and then Madden comes in again at number 9 for the Xbox 360. So what were 2 and 3? The new Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo DS oh, came in at yeah. number 2. I'm surprised number 3, though. Kingdom Hearts 2 for PlayStation 2. The first one was huge. I heard very good things yeah. about the second one, that it was just crazy, insane fun. I never played Kingdom Hearts. What's it like? Neither did I. It's, it's like uh, Final Fantasy and yeah. Disney characters. Yeah, oh, Disney characters. okay. Yeah. It's action, too, when you're fighting the things. So mm -hmm. it's... it's 
it's pretty fun. It is a fun game. But let's see. One, two, three, four, five games of the top ten are actually for the PlayStation 2. Three of them are for the Xbox 360. Two of them are for the Nintendo DS. And that's all. Although Gears of War being at number four is kind of... It, it's surprising because... That's it's impressive because it, yeah, like, it, it, it came out in November. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Kingdom Hearts has been around for probably eight, nine months, ten months. And Madden was probably out if it was Madden. August. Uh, number five is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter for the 360. Uh, number six is Final Fantasy XII for the PlayStation 2. Number seven is Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories for the PlayStation 2. Number eight is NCAA Football 07 for the PlayStation 2. Number nine is Madden 07 for the 360. And number 10 is, also surprised me, Brain Age for the Nintendo DS. One of the biggest things that helped that game was that it was 20 bucks i, I, I thought that maybe nintendogs would be more above brain age i'm with you tom I, i'm surprised that nintendogs wasn't up there either well, actually i'm kind of surprised final fantasy 12 did as well as it did yeah me too because it it came out like o- end of october and that's pretty good numbers for just two months yeah yeah in the in the two months it did 1 million units sold 1.8 million was the highest selling for 06 no Final I thought Fantasy. Gears hit two million, didn't it? Uh, it's one million in the United States, two million. This is this is USA. Oh, oh you okay. know, you're right. Two million worldwide. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Next topic. We're moving on to we friendly porn sites. <laughs> Aren't they all? Yeah, but my alternative topic was adult industry gets into bed with Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I guess it started where a bunch of porn sites they're beginning to have designs and layouts specifically for easy access with Nintendo Wii. They're making it look more like the Wii Shop channels and that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the best quote on this whole thing was uh, Luke Plunkett from the Kotaku blog where he says, "Quote: It just doesn't seem right that the home of such pure childlike pleasure is now a window to digital." digital depravity <laughs> so being the good journalist that i am i had to investigate further <laughs> yeah so that was a rough call for you huh <laughs> and i found that these we friendly sites th- basically they just made the clickable areas really big so that if there's any text links it has a big fat border around it so it makes it easy to click with the moat oh so i thought there was some form of integration with the we moat you know what you know, you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i'm talking intercourse with the controller that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you were just implying, like, if you're sitting back on a chair, kind of like at Ivan's house, and the, the controller just randomly starts vibrating on you. Me. <laughs> My junk! My junk is vibrating! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Next topic. Uh, so poor Atari. Atari's in trouble again. They were about to be delisted from Nasdaq. So they've done a, a 10 to 1 reverse stock split where I think they were a penny stock and so now one stock they is up to a dime. 57 cents. So anyway, so I tried to figure out, okay, why is Atari in such a trouble? So I go on their website to take a look at all, at some of the games they've published recently. And their three newest titles. One, okay, we're already starting off in the hole because it's Dungeons and Dragons Online. And we already established last week that that thing's in trouble. Two is Test Drive Unlimited for the Xbox 360. I have no idea how how successful that game is not very because yeah, I I, <laughs> none of us have heard of it i'm yeah. assuming not very and that is their only game that they've published for the xbox 360 their one title that we do like is never winter nights, nights 2 for 2. the pc mm-hmm. and then they have a bunch of dragon ball titles for the psp ps2 and wii most of the games they publish are on the pc and they're not even a-list titles it's things like backyard baseball and other games that no one's actually chris playing. has chris yeah loves backyard chris probably baseball. owns all of them <laughs> And then they have a, a digital download store so you could buy games directly through Atari.com. And the two top games that they're promoting on that thing are Pat Sajak's Lucky Numbers, <laughs> or Lucky <laughs> Letters, and Deer Hunter 2005. Well, uh, well, oh, it hurts me. Exactly. Uh, so, again, I go back to the Oracle of All Things, Wikipedia, and I, to find out who actually owns Atari, and now it's I, all I'm making sense. I'm kind of sense. offended that you it's have... Info games, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually not Info games. It's Info Grammars. Yeah, it's a French yeah. word. Grammys. In, in, Info yeah. Grains or something. Basically, they're a French holding company, so they're, yeah. they just own a bunch of companies. They don't really do anything. Right. I, I believe Keith was going to say something, though. Keith? He probably forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know it what, actually, wasn't anything important. Uh, uh, <laughs> I told you he forgot. <laughs> I, I, was, I was being considerate. Next topic. Fred, I saw the, a video of this guy with the Madden porn. I saw a photograph of the kid. He looked funny even by himself. Yeah. But anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> First of all, what? He's like 14, 15? If I got a Christmas gift and I opened it and it was porn, he would keep be like, your mouth shut. I would keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to my room to play with my Wii for a while. <laughs> I gotta play Madden. A good three minutes. 
and then I'll be back later. <laughs> Why would you go be like, Mom, yeah, you gave me a porno. I mean, your mom and dad, you better watch this with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the best part was, is he sat, like, through the warnings and stuff. You know, where it comes up, it's like, you know, these are sexual fantasies, yada, 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 yada. FBI, all all <laughs> actors are over 18. And he's just sitting there like, doo, 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 like doo, doo. <laughs> this is going to be the best Madden game ever. <laughs> Next topic. And moving on. New twist on the HD war. So, okay, we're a video game show, but often we cover issues surrounding high-definition television and movies because, whether we like it or not, it affects consoles today. So, next week is the Consumer Electronics Show, which is in, what, Las Vegas? Vegas. Yep. Yeah. And so, Warner Brothers is going to unveil a new universal disc format. It's going to be compatible with both Blu-ray... Blu-ray? Blu-ray! 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 And HD DVD readers. And uh, they're calling it Total HD. So their hope is that instead of movie studios releasing two versions of the same movie, they could just release one version. And there's going to be upsides and downsides to this because now you're going to only have half the capacity to actually have content if you're going to have content both in HD and Blu-ray. So I don't know how much of a win this is for the consumers. I would much rather see... Well, for movies, what difference would it make? I mean, the movie's only so long. Yeah, but I like all the things like the director's commentary and and you know alternative scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, that is true. I do like that stuff as well. You know, it's one thing if you're talking about storage space for a game or something. If you're talking about you know video content, I mean, a lot of that stuff they start throwing on there just because they had the space. True. And even with all that, a lot of DVDs now aren't even full. So better would be a drive that reads both media, not a media that works in either drive. Did you check that one article that I had on there about the uh, Blu-ray discs that don't actually work on Blu-ray players? No, I missed that. They're, they're, uh, Sony released a title called The Descent, which was a horror film from uh, Britain that came out a couple months ago on mm-hmm. Blu-ray. And it only works in the Sony PlayStation 3 because one of the features it uses when you... In, in the movie, there's a picture-in-picture video commentary. And because of the way it's implemented on the disc, it only works right now on the PlayStation 3 because their, oh, their firmware is updated to the right I, Yeah, I did see that. But they're going to release a firmware update for their standalone players. Yeah. Not, yeah. You know, not every consumer is going to bother updating their firmware. But, but how know, the hell do you even update the yeah, firmware that's, that's on your yeah. DVD player? Yeah, that, that's surprising how Big amazing there is an OS in these Sony DVD players that has to be updated to watch a movie. Is that is that just where the world's going? Is like every electronic device you have is going to have require a, a, hacking. Yes. <laughs> it's it's going to have to be some 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 like everybody's going to have to be Wi-Fi compatible with like you know sorry, Wi-Fi terminals your... in the middle of the city. <laughs> so I cannot you can cook just... your toast. <laughs> <laughs> your to- your bread is incompatible with my toast. I'm looking at some of the stuff they're doing in the universities now with sticking microcontrollers on everything and and. You know, we're putting them in smaller, smaller packages, so they'll be ubiquitous. Be, everything's going to have a microcontroller in it. Your microwave will stop being fast because every time you turn it on, it has to update itself. We'll cook your dinner in 20 seconds. I don't <laughs> think the issue is the microcontrollers themselves. It's the idea that you're going to have to update these things to have it working. You know what they can do? You buy a Blu-ray disc and you put it in your Blu-ray player, and if it doesn't have the right firmware, the, the update will be on the DVD, just like they did with the PSP games. If you don't have the right firm, that's so that's how yeah. you'll be able so to upgrade your firmware. Everybody that's going to bring out a D- Blu-ray player is going to have to implement some sort of patching bias right. update. <laughs> yeah. well, that would suck. You want to come home from, from work? You want to watch a movie? Your DVD player has a virus. All your movies now have pink penises floating across the image. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny, dude. <laughs> Next topic. Okay, now that Bob actually has an Xbox, they're releasing new versions of the Xbox 360, codenamed Zephyr. This early this spring, a new Zephyr. version Zephyr, sue me, a new version of the Xbox Enterprise, 360 stupid. is coming out. It's gonna have um, Kugarami. <laughs> Kutagami. <laughs> Go on, Tom. Well, the first the first change is not new. We already knew it. The CPU is moving to a 65 nanometer process, so it's going to be a smaller chip that can run cooler and more efficiently. It's not going to be any more powerful. Your games aren't going to get faster frame rates. The other change is going to be a larger hard drive. The rumor is going to be a 120 gigabyte hard drive for the yeah. same price as the premium right. is now. Engage.com had a picture of the back end of this new 360, and right there is an HDMI port. So now you can watch your movies in your whole 1080p glory. Where's our rumor squasher when we need them? Mm. They have to go to a larger hard drive because of the uh, Xbox Live media stuff now. I mean, an HD uh, HD movie is like what 
four, six gig or something it's, it's like big. that. It's like eight or up, up to eight yeah. or nine, possibly. Which means so. you're only going to get one or two movies on right, there before right. you. This week it came out that Xbox Live was more successful mm-hmm. in selling movies than Amazon.com's Unbox program. You know, they had their hopes on competing with like Netflix in delivering um, movies to people's homes through their PC. And it turns out that Microsoft's doing a better job with live. Well, that's because the Amazon stuff, it's very hard to actually get it onto your TV. You have to, Whereas, you have to plug your PC into your you television. You have to plug it in yeah, or yeah, burn yeah, it or yeah. something like that. Whereas with the Xbox, it's there. It's already plugged in. You just download and go. Yeah, and I don't have the, the hard numbers in front of me, but I'm willing to bet that BitTorrent is still crushing everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder a bit why. Of, a little bit of tech savvy goes a long way. <laughs> Next topic. If you have a Nintendo Wii, <laughs> go to g Zero. <laughs> Tell us what it's really like, because none of us have one. Brian was calling around this morning again. Nothing. Still no one's got them? Still They're no going to be out them. for a long... You know, that's funny because a friend of mine fr- at work actually got a PS3 from his parents for Christmas. Those are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they, they had yeah. a stack of them at Target the other day. Yeah, I was, I was at Target and I saw really? the PlayStation 3s they, yeah. they had. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's the thing. I, I was watching the news and they had something where a lady's car got stolen and her PlayStation 3 was in the back of it. And they tried to make it sound like the PlayStation 3 was the reason for the theft. I can almost guarantee that it wasn't. And they're talking about how hot it's selling and how great it is and how... It, no! They, these people don't look into anything that they start talking about. Their stories are rubbish. The media irritates me. Another good example. <laughs> here, wait, I'll, I'm going to continue this tirade right here. Alright, we all know Saddam got hanged, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So they have these kids that have hung themselves in direct response to Saddam's hanging. How come the media isn't all up their ass? How come there's no Hillary Clinton ain't saying how the news media needs to be regulated and watched and, and guarded because it's corrupting kids? Two kids just hung themselves through a direct correlation to this. But no, that's okay. But video games, video games are, are, are the devil. They're evil. They're, they're totally, totally bad. Even though two kids just hung themselves because of the news. Did you guys hear the thing that the the kid from the UK, I think he was, but went to Taiwan and he died by, from electrocuting himself from unplugging his Game Boy so that all the news titles were Game Boy Kills Child? Yeah, even though he had been wet or something, he was like covered in water. He was in a swimming pool. <laughs> He gets out, and over in Taiwan, it's like 220 volts over there. Yeah, and he goes to unplug his Game Boy, Jeez. and... <laughs> but no, Jumped the Game Boy... The socket at yeah, him. the Game Boy... The Game obvi- Boy killed him. It obviously killed him, yeah. If it wasn't there... Huh. Anybody else smell minced meat pie? <laughs> 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 but, I mean, am I wrong in, in that anger there? I mean... How come that the news having people kill themselves is perfectly acceptable, but a video game that has people dying in it is going to just completely erode the youth and make their minds putty? Next topic. I'm really excited about this. The Command & Conquer 3 trailer has hit the web. March 28th, 2007, that's when CNC3 is dropping. If you've seen the trailer, it looks incredible, and I've put it up on the forums, the GamerCast.com forums. Why do you want it? It's, it's coming out for both, you know. It's going to be an Xbox 360 and a PC title. It'll suck. As a yeah, that's why it's, it's going to suck. suck on the 360. But it, it might suck on the PC as well because they're going to have to dumb down the whole thing to get it, you know. No, because that's not true because they have games like Battlefield that come out on both platforms and they're different games. It's still going to suck. You know it's going to On the suck. 360, on the PC, it's probably going to be pretty good. I mean, when was the last time you played a Command & Conquer game that wasn't good? I couldn't tell you the last time I played a Command & Conquer game. The last time I played a Command & Conquer game, the year began with 19. <laughs> I don't think any of the games that followed Command & Conquer and Red Alert were as popular as the first two. True. I don't know. I, I liked them all. I'm looking forward to this one because the last game in the Command & Conquer series had James Earl Jones as playing the leader of the GDI. This time around, they have uh, Billy D. Williams and um, no, oh, Michael, yeah. sweet. Michael Ironsides on GDI. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, just... but, you know, see, I'm a Battlestar Galactica fan. They have two hotties from Battlestar Galactica. They have Grace Parks, who plays Boomer, and Trisha Helfer, who plays number six. So two uh, hot number Cylons. Number six. Yeah. <laughs> Number six. Uh, well, at least I'm looking forward to it because I deem year 2007 to be the year of the PC. Tom, shut up. No one cares. Next topic. This is going to be one of the group. This one, uh, Team Fortress 2 Crisis, this is going to be a great year for the PC. I will continue to say otherwise until I finally have enough money to buy a new PC, at which point I'll be with you all the way. <laughs> I'm a whore. <laughs> Next topic. 
All right, the new E3. So there was some controversy this week about what exactly was the successor to E3. Because as we all know, in E3 2006, they said that was going to be the last one. And then uh, this past fall, the Entertainment Software Association, which was the organization that backs E3, came out with a new conference, and they're calling E3 Media and Business Summit. And it was going to be July 11th and 13th in Santa Monica. It was going to be a smaller venue, and it was going to be invitation only. So Mary Dolor, who used to work for E3, and it was her team that planned the E3, well, now she left and joined publisher IDG, who publishes magazines such as GamePro. And they're putting on a conference that they're calling Entertainment for All Expo. It's going to be open to anybody who wants to go. It's going to be in LA at the LA Convention Center, which is the convention center that they used to hold the old E3 at. It's going to cost 100 bucks to get in the door. Ooh. The event's going to have a jobs fair. It's going to have a gaming tournament. It's going to have live music. It's kind of a rip-off of PAX to have live music. And that's going to be on October 18th to 20th. Has there been any... I mean, that's great. You can go ahead and say whatever the hell you want, but has anybody signed up? I mean, has Sony or Microsoft or anybody said anything? Uh, actually, the, the IDG... For who Mary Dollar was with, and the one that's going to be open to everybody. They're the ones that put on Mac World Expo and Linux World Expo, so that's what they do. I mean, they put on conferences. Now there's these two competing expos trying to, I guess, take the crown of the old E3, or will either one of these be as big and have as much pomp as the old one? I don't know. You said pomp. Next topic. This week, I have one fact and four craps. Number one, Bob Ross's joy of painting the game. We all, I mean, we all, we all remember Bob Ross with his, you know, his happy Wait, little trees happy and little yeah, trees. Yeah, peaceful happy little, little rivers trees. and undeniably quite, sexy afro. Dead. Ooh, it's a well, man's afro. A game publisher has announced that they're going to develop the game for the Wii, the DS, and the PC and is hoping for release by the end of the first quarter of 2008. On the DS and Wii, that would be perfect. You get to paint with your little remote, happy little trees. Number happy little trees. I think we need Number a little, little path going to the forest and back. Dude, this afro was sweet, though. How did someone like that, who was so calm, just, just die so young? You know, you think like someone that just like lived forever, just in Because he went home and drank and beat yeah. his wife. And- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. Dude, that's, re- that's repressed rage. <laughs> Number two, Katamari Damacy for Xbox Live Arcade. It's been announced that the lovable little turd that rolls around having garbage stick to it is bound for <laughs> Xbox Live Arcade, with all of its feces-fetching goodness. Uh, the official release date has not yet been set, but suggests by the end of third quarter of 2007. Number three. Showtime Network is to offer a video game service. Showtime Network is now branching out into the video game industry and is joining forces with a game publisher to form a new company that will offer a game service for cable TV companies and DSL broadband providers. Number four, Final Fantasy VII Part II, exclusively on the PlayStation 3. Due to the success of Final Fantasy VII spin-off Dirge of Cerebrus, Square Enix has announced intent to produce a direct sequel to the PlayStation 2 title, Final Fantasy VII, and this has been hoped upon by fans for quite some time, and Sony has succeeded in securing exclusive rights to it. And number five, which I know Bob can appreciate, the video game Loaded. You remember that one? Hell yes. It's going to Hollywood, but it's as if Iwi Bull is the one that picked it up. So as if Iwi Bull's taint has not been enough of uh, what gamers hold sacred, he somehow managed to wrap his tiny little sausage fingers around the rights to turn this into a movie. (laughs) But Loaded is an excellent game. Fond memories there. So those are your five. Four of them are crap, and one of them is true. I'm going to guess that number three is true. Uh, Showtime trying to get into the uh, the gaming and, and broadband industry. I'm going to say this because I think this is like one of their prime opportunities to, to get ahead of HBO for, for once. And I'm going to have to agree with Phil here on the uh, Showtime broadband service being the uh, true. Mr. Ivan. I think I have to go with the Showtime thing too, only because I, I remember reading that on, on a website. Okay. But it would be sweet if I could do Joy of Painting on my DS. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll go next. And I want to keep in the vein of voting for stuff that I hope is true along the lines of last week. So I will vote for number one, the Joy of Painting the Game for various <laughs> Nintendo products, because that would be cool. <laughs> I want it to be true, even though I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a load of crap. But 
Tom. I want number one to be true so badly because that would be so great. But come on, come with I, me, Tom. Come I know. I, I, I have the world side of, of, of pixie dust and sugar plums and joy painting video <laughs> games. <laughs> I'm siding with the Showtime one only because of like all the things that Keith can make up. How can you possibly make up that Showtime is entering into the video game business? So it's all of us against Bob. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, and you all got it nailed. Right. Yeah. I thought I thought I had him pretty good this week too. Well, anyway, number one is false. No. Uh, actually, there was a Bob Ross paint game, Joy of Painting game, that was scheduled uh, to be produced by a game publisher called Agfrag, but they said. I'm sorry that we've disappointed so many people on a certain project. We realized we did, we did what we felt best with the cards we were dealt to us in the situation we were in. We learned from our experiences, and we won't make the same mistakes twice. They're backing out, <laughs> but there still has been no word from Bob Ross, Inc. if they're going to let it die or move forward. He's, no, it won't. he's been deceased for quite a few years, though, hasn't he? What, six, seven years, maybe? But he's alive in our hearts. He always will be in his giant afro. Number two, Katamari Damacy for Xbox Live Arcade. That's false as well. There were rumors going around that this was in fact going to happen, but a, uh, a friend of ours here at the podcast, and that's an Italian reference for all you Polacks out there, the worldwide <laughs> Xbox Live <laughs> Arcade Games <laughs> portfolio manager, Ross Erickson, who has just a hell of a title, just a hell of a title, he uh, sculpted a rumor with impunity and simply stated, total crap, not happening. <laughs> All right, Final Fantasy seven two one. Uh No, everything on that is just complete crap. I made it up the entire way. Uh, Dirge of Cerberus wasn't a hit. Sony secured nothing exclusive since last PlayStation <laughs> console or Final Fantasy seven. fabricate all. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to be made. And Loaded Goes to Hollywood is also false. I just wanted to make a reference to a game with Loaded in it. Right. Showtime is, in fact, going to try to... Get in on the gaming. The service will be offered to offer selection of games that can be downloaded or played online. Some will be free, some will be pay to play, and some subscription free, uh, option will also be available. And it's expected to launch in the second quarter of this year. So I didn't fool anyone. I didn't even fool Bob, but Bob just likes to go with things that he wants to be true. <laughs> That's right. You believe hard enough, it's bound to happen, right? Next topic. All right, everybody. Guess who's back in the gaming news? Jack Dempsey, the unspeakable be yeah. one himself. <laughs> Dude, who's barfing? It's Brian! Is he barfing? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, continue. So apparently this time, he's sending dirty letters directly to Bill Gates, warning him that if he directly participates... To life. He's cutting out the middleman yeah. and just sending pictures of penises. <laughs> how, how do you like it? <laughs> he's warning Bill Gates that if he takes any... He's warning Bill Gates. He's warning Bill yeah. Gates. He's just gonna, like, send a... He's just gonna send a troop of ninjas after his ass. <laughs> he's like, I'm Bill Gates, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> That if, if Bill Gates contributes to selling Grand Theft Auto 4 to minors, there are going to be repercussions. <laughs> you cannot threaten Bill <laughs> Oh my god, dude. <laughs> well, here's the question. It's coming out on two platforms. Why is he threatening Bill Gates and not Sony? Yeah, that was the question, was how come Sony didn't get uh, I don't know, Maybe he can't that threaten note. in Japanese. Bumblefoot was the one who used to say that Sony was conducting a modern-day Pearl Harbor for allowing Grand Theft Auto <laughs> to be played on the PlayStation. Uh, he says a lot of things. So there you go. There's your Bumblefoot update. Enjoy. It gets more and more ridiculous. Oh, I would love man. Bill Gates just to send a note back that says, like, Dude, what are you going to do? No. And that's his like next it. Note, that's all it says. <laughs> his next note's just going to say, Dear God, the repercussions from you allowing this game to be sold. Next topic. Hey, guys, it's time for the mailbag. Mailbag! Mailbag! <laughs> Gassy Emu writes, When GCN <laughs> first... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Gassy Emu. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a sweet name. When GCN first started out, I remember you guys putting an emphasis on getting the word out and taking pictures of your efforts. Well, I don't have any pics, but I did duct tape VGS all over my school bathroom, but was caught before I could take a picture with my camera phone. Oh, well, keep up the great work. And you keep up the great work, buddy. You That's too. the kind of street team we need. <laughs> the guy who's not afraid to duct tape his bathroom. That's that's our target audience, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Gassy Emu. Uh, you get a ham sandwich. You do get a ham emu. sandwich. <laughs> and then Damo P sent me a map of Australia with Perth highlighted, so now I know where Perth is. Thank you, <laughs> Damo P. I had no idea they had cities on the west side of the island. Oh, there's Perth. That Perth is a pretty big uh, little dot there, too. <laughs> Look at that little fella. Hey, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> I mean, it's the same size dot as Sydney. Look at Can that. Canberra and Adelaide. And Darwin, I mean, if you're the same size as Darwin. Oh, dude, it's Monkey Maja. Monkey Maja? 
Monkey Majija. That's a sweet name. I want to go there. Yeah, Australia, Australia is named like a medieval map. Carnivon, Monkey Mia, the Pinnacles. Wave so this rock. is what Australia looks like. Huh. Mount Can Magnet. Mount Magnet. Don't wear your watch when you go there. <laughs> The Twelve Apostles. I mean, come on. This is like a, a fantasy world. Dude, Australia is a fantasy world. <laughs> Have oh, you seen a platypus, that's... dude? <laughs> uh, good point, good point. That's where the Great Barrier Reef is. Like, there. <laughs> I mean, where it says so on the map? <laughs> I thought that said Great Austa Australian Blight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what I'll do. I'll send Demo a uh, map of Ohio with Cleveland highlighted. He still won't be able to find it. All right, guys, we want to give out ham sandwiches. Ham sandwiches, anyone? Yeah, I want to give a ham sandwich that crazy that jumped in the uh, train tracks and rescued that guy. <laughs> some guy fell that. into a subway. He had some kind of, like, thing. seizure or something yeah. and fell into a, onto the tracks of the subway. Oh, my God. The du some Vietnam vet just jumped down there and pulled him into one of the ruts between the tracks, and the train went over him. He's basically saved the guy's life by diving into the... Like, just split second decided he was going to dive down there, and did it. Yeah, it's like something you kind of see in a movie with, like, yeah, the train. Like, he, it's superhero. So that guy gets a ham sandwich, because that's just insane. <laughs> I want to say go Bucks and... And uh, Michigan still sucks. That was episode number 19, guys, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye bye. I felt like a piece of shit that day. I was like, oh my god. No, I realize you're more of a piece of shit because you gotta make jokes and like look cool. <laughs> and if you prick, I'll kill you! <laughs> I'm the only one who's allowed to call myself a piece of <laughs> Lay it out as some kind of manifesto. You are Head, and these are the reasons why. <laughs> no, I got no, 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 Bob. Let me finish. It's a three-volume set. I've been working on it for quite some time. <laughs>